Hello, my name is Jupiter Hadley, this is Tubecraft Gaming, and basically this is another tutorial video on how to use Game Maker Studio to make a fairly simple game. So, in this episode we're going to finish our score counter off, as well as make enemies that spawn from a spawner, and play around with variables. So, first off, there's a score counter that I was sort of fickle on, and why? Why is this already done? I'm going to delete these to show you how to do it. I don't know why they keep showing up there. But in the last video, we got about this far, except your, your event should look like a create event. Basically, you just want to go into change event, um, go into, where is it, step, and then just select step, and then I'll fix that. But we're going to continue up in here. So, yeah, let's, let's start. Um, we're going to add an event. And it's going to be other, and then game start. So when the game starts, we're going to go over to score, and we're going to set our score to zero, and we're going to set our lives to three, just by dragging those two in. And that's that for game start. We're going to add another event. We're going to select draw, and then GUI, or GUI, however you feel like saying it. And this is basically going to have our counter that's displayed. The counter will follow your object from room to room, or your main player from room to room, and follow them across the screen. It just displays how many lives you have, your score, and your ammo. So to do that, I'm going to throw in my little uh, green rimmed heart. And I'm going to put it X20, Y40. Because basically this is your X and Y axis, so it's going to show up in the page. And you might want to play around with numbers a little bit until you decide where's a good location for it. I played around and decided that was good for me. I'm going to drag in my score. And I'm going to make the X20 and Y60, so it's right below. And then for our ammo, because ammo is kind of a good thing to show, you need to do a little bit more work. You need to execute code. So drag in our execute code. I'm going to do draw underscore text. And then parentheses 20 comma 80. Or, yeah, 20 comma 80. And that's, again, your X and Y axis. And then comma quotation ammo. And then colon. And I'm going to do a space qu quotation or space, yeah, quotation. Um, that space is so that it lines up with everything else. And we're going to do plus sign, space, plus sign, space, string, space, parentheses, global, dot, ammo, close parentheses, close parentheses, semicolon. So the first closes that parentheses, the second closes the whole thing. And then that's already in our game. So I'm going to show you how that looks real quick. So... There it is. It's gaining more ammo. There we go. Next, we are going to add our enemy. So I made a little enemy. It's just this little red guy with uh, green eyebrows and wonky eyes. I'm going to make him an object. I'm going to call him object enemy. We're going to add him. This enemy isn't going to be too fancy. It's not going to shoot. It's just going to follow your character around, uh, avoiding and going around walls. And once it hits your character, your character dies and resets. So we're going to add event. Step. Begin step. And then we're going to do this um, bottom of move. There's um, steps in this step, basically. And our X is going to be obj underscore player dot X. And basically, obj underscore player is whatever you called your player. That's what name should be there. I called my player obj underscore player, so that's what I'm going to put there. But it basically makes it so that it follows your player. And then obj underscore player dot y. So the dot y and dot x you have to add, but the ob underscore player needs to be whatever you called your player. We're going to give him a speed of 2. And make sure solid only is done. So... Now, to follow your player, we're also going to make it so that a bullet kills it. So, we're going to add event, collision, collision with our bullet. And then, we're going to, in here, find, or grab score. And we're going to drag over our score. I'm going to give 10 points, and you want to click relative, so that it accumulates. And then, we're also going to go over main one, and destroy itself on instance, once it hits. We're add one more event, and this is going to be the other, and then outside room. And you basically want to go over to move and just drag in reverse horizontal direction and reverse vertical direction. This makes it so that it can't magically escape the room. And that's it for your enemy. Um, next, we need to go into our bullet. And we need to make it so that at event, collision, 
collision with enemy, and it destroys, basically whenever it collides with the enemy itself, it destroys itself, so it can't fly through an enemy and continue flying. And then we're going to hit OK. What we also need to do is make it so that if the enemy collides with our player, our player loses a life. So we're going to ignore the fact that my battery mode is being weird. We're going to add event collision and we're going to do collision with the enemy. And then we're going to go over into score, drag over our lives. We're going to set lives, new lives, negative one relative. So make sure relative is checked. So whenever it collides, we lose a life. And then in move, we want to jump to jump self, jump to start position. So this will go back to wherever you placed your character in the beginning of the game. So it'll go straight back there. And we also want to execute a bit of code. We don't want him to like start off with no ammo. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to set global.ammo equal to 10. So we're going to give him 10 more bullets to play with. So that should now work. Um, I'm just going to test it real quick. I'm going to throw some enemies into our room. Click OK. So these guys move around. I'm going to let that one kill me. See, it sent me back, gave me 10 ammo again. And now they're all dead. Awesome. So that works, but you don't just want to have random enemies lurking around at the start of the game. So what we need to do next is... Let's just delete these guys real quick. Alright. Basically, um, I made this little spawner. I don't know why it's called Spree. But there's our spawner. It's just like a little Minecraft themed spawner. And we're going to turn that into an object. And we're going to make it so that enemies spawn from our spawner. So, select that up there. Now, this gets a bit complicated. So, yeah, we're going to start playing with variables. So we're going to add an event, create, and then we want to find our variables, which is under control, and we're going to bring over our squared variable, and our variable is going to be spawn timer, and we're going to have a value of 1, and hit OK. So now we got to add another event, it's going to be step, step, and we're going to pull in this octagon shape variable, and we're going to have variable is going to be distance, underscore, to, underscore, object. Now this makes it so that Object. This makes it so that they don't just spawn when your object isn't by it. So we're gonna make it so that our, or I'm sorry, it's, we're gonna make it so that our player needs to be somewhat close to the spawner before the spawner will spawn a enemy. Because if not, your screen just gets filled up with enemy and it gets enemies and it gets complicated. And we're gonna put object parentheses object underscore player object underscore player again needs to be the name of your player in parentheses your main guy. Put a value of, um, let's say, 120, and we want less than. So you might want to test this number out, change it a little bit, and see how close you want to be to your spawner before it spawns. But that's what you change to do it. And you want to hit OK. Next, we're going to grab two blocks, a start block and an end block. In between that, we need a square variable. That variable, we're going to hit the relative. The variable name is going to be spawn timer. And we're going to have the value at negative 1. And then we're going to hit OK. Next, outside of this block, we're going to grab our octagon variable. And we're going to call it spawn timer. We have it at a value of 0, and it has to be equal to. So that's all good. Next, we're going to have another block. Drag another block out there. And we're going to grab another square variable. And the variable is going to be called spawn timer again. And we're going to have a value of 30. And then inside that block, we're also going to go into main one. And we're going to grab a create. And we're going to do create object enemy. And we need self.x and self.y. So it'll create it on the spawner. And that's all set. So let me show you that. Throw a spawner up here and a spawner down here. Okay. Alright, so right now I'm far away from the spawner, so nothing's going to spawn. But when I move close, and you can make those speed up. Because they're sort of slow, but just to show you. Right now they're at the speed of 2. But 
Yep. And my points are going up now. I've got 80, 90, 100. I'm doing awesome. I died. Whoop. So, yeah. That's how you create little enemies. Now, what we're going to do is, um, because we're, you know, having so much fun with these variables, and because it's quite a simple thing, when our enemies die, we're going to turn them into little blood splatters. So, here's our little splatter of blood. I just created it real quick. It's a very simple thing to make. Um, so, we're going to turn it into an object. And so, select it. We're going to have add event create. Then under create, we're going to go back to our variable, drag a square variable. And we're going to have time 60. And what this basically makes it so that it disappears over time, so it's not there forever. Because they can tend to clog up your screen. We're going to add another event, step, step, and we're going to throw in a variable box. Our variable is going to be time. It's going to be equal to negative 1. And we want it to be relevant, so, you know, time slowly counts down before it goes away. And we're going to also add a rectangular variable, and the variable is going to be, again, time. The value is going to be 0, and the operation is equal to, so that's all set. We're going to throw up our little start block, end block. In between, under main one, we want destroy self. And then that's all set. We want to go into our enemy. And under our collision, we want to add. Um, under main one again, we want to add our create. And we want to create object blood. Object blood on instance yep I'll just one yeah and that should be it yep all right so oh why is that showing up up there that's a bit annoying Huh. Let me just see if I can fix this real quick. Oh, sorry. Create instance, and then under X, we need obj underscore enemy dot X, and obj underscore enemy dot Y. And then now it should work. There we go. Let's see if that goes away over time. Doop. Ah. And there you go. So, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you enjoy these videos, if they help you at all, please like them. If you guys comment on them, saying that they're, like, I don't know, I have trouble making these videos because I literally do record them, like, a billion times. And when you guys comment, sort of makes me do them, I actually sit down and do them. But yeah, um, thank you very much for watching. Um, as always, have a good day. Um, yeah, bye!